Hey guys, Andrew here from MNPC Tech. I've got Bill in the shop with me hey, today. what's up? We're looking at the Lian Li A75. This case is Lian Li's answer to the V750, which I reviewed a little while back. That case came in at a hefty 379. What? Uh, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. Almost 400 bucks <laughs> per case. This thing's 199, which is oh. a lot easier to take. Um, and it looks beautiful. Extended ATX form factor. The thing's huge, gorgeous, so we're going to be taking a look at this guy today. Big, massive intake on the front of the A75. What's behind here is three factory 140 millimeter cooling fans, which are included with it. Then. They've scaled down to just two five and a quarter optical drives. One has the Lian Li Stealth drive cover. So if you still have that beige drive that you love for some reason <laughs> and you don't want to paint it, you can use this to hide that from all your friends. Then one thing I've always liked about Lian Li is the very discreet stealth-like LED lenses that are here for uh, power and hard drive activity. Now coming up to the top, they've got three, or no, two 3.0 USB and two 2.0 USB headphone mic and then this mysterious porthole here which is what we, we think it's maybe for eSATA but we're not entirely sure there isn't actually a port there so either they're going to take that off or they're going to put that on for the market I yeah. guess we'll see yeah it could be that it's just an option to add it for some regions or something since we got the first sample in the states don't know, but this is pretty slick how this can cover up like this. But normally, wouldn't we all just leave that open? You know, don't usually for your camera or whatever. I would, yeah. Phone. I think so. Yeah. All right. Um, push button. These do not illuminate. Power and reset. And looking back here, this is something new I haven't seen in Lee Lee before. Lee Lee. I do a lot. Lee Lee. <laughs> um, there is uh, two one twenty fan hole locations here of covers and we double checked 15 millimeter spacing so you can put a 240 radiator in there so if you're really in love with the Corsair H100s or the multitude of other 240 radiators of enclosed loops on the market now you can install that in the top if you wish and taking a look at the front panel you can see this is all one piece um, which was laser cut uh, and this is it's it's really nice it's clean it's durable uh, it, it really makes for a beautiful uh, front of the case here. And looking at what's underneath, we've got our three 140 millimeter fans uh, with filters as well. And I, I think uh, we were going to take a look at uh, if this is 20 millimeter spacing, then you can fit a triple 140 radiator up front as well. That would be really nice. That would be. I can't think of um, another tower on the market right now. I mean, although there may be one, I can't think of one that will take a triple 140 radiator out of the box without having to cut stuff up. Yeah. But once we get inside, we'll know uh, what obstructions you run into um, for doing that option. Um, closer look, two LEDs right here. These are removable. They aren't glued in, so they pop right out, which is nice. I mean, some guys actually want to swap out colors or whatever. What's clever, too, is... Um, the lenses that they make for the LEDs, it's kind of like a projector style uh, uh, rod lens, which is pretty cool. There is a factory 120 millimeter exhaust fan that's included with it. You've got a couple of ports here for water cool tubing. Um, really hard plastic, I don't know if I would use those. It may pierce some types of tubing out there. Probably not a good idea. Make these much softer. That's just my opinion on that. 11 PCI slots. 11, all right? So how many of you out there are running quad SLI setups right now? Probably more than, he, than us, right? <laughs> are you running a quad? I have, running a tr I have a quad. You have a quad? Yes, I have a quad, so this case would be perfect. I do like a lot of PCI room because as you do, even with SLI. When you start adding more devices in there, it gets really cramped in smaller cases, so it's nice just to have a lot of room to expand in the future. There's not a lot of uh, cases on the market that will take quad SLI, is there? 
I mean, the the eight the, Z, the V750 would. Right, depending on how big you know how big the coolers are on them. Yeah. How much space they're taking up and stuff. But. So well, I mean, that's one niche that the Enlys tapping into right there. You know, you guys that want to run triple and S triple and quad SLI, or uh, you know, quad crossfire too. And notice the power supply mounting plate. That's nice. That yeah, these are nice screws. Too. Yep. Yep, so this piece right here is removable. Um, yep, so that's pretty much the back. But we're taking the side panel off. Now, the A75 will fit extended ATX motherboards, which was the main selling point with the V750. So you've got that with this too, and of course ATX, ITX, which I'm still... Why you would put that in this case, I you don't know. You know what, I know but... some people that would though. <laughs> That's fair. That's absolutely. They really like ITX. Right. Um, this is something I've never seen Lee and Lee have before. Cable grommets. I've never seen a Lee and Lee chassis before with those. Huh. Huh. How durable are they? Well, it comes up pretty easy. Mm. It's a start. It, it's a start, yeah. Well, it's good to see, you know? Yeah. And they didn't have those in the, the more expensive V750. No, they here, didn't. So. No. That's always nice. Um, the video card support beam here, which some people have said that they've got Lee and Lee chassis with that and they didn't even use it and they were just fine. Um, so yeah, it's your own prerogative. Um, I guess I would use it because it does also support, it's midsection support for the whole chassis too. You know, and why wouldn't you use it? If the manufacturer is going as far to make it for you, including it, why not use it? Although I shouldn't say that because a lot of stuff from the factory I don't ever use. True. <laughs> and it may just be unnecessary overkill at that as well. So, um, <laughs> Andrew, how many three and a half inch drives do you have in your possession? Uh, in my current system? Yeah. Three. Three. And that's a lot for most people, I think. It is. Especially today with SSDs right. coming down so much in price. Um, what is this? Um, too many. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 spots for three and a half inch drives. Wow. I don't, you know, just my personal opinion is that somebody that wants to build a, like a, a server for a commercial environment probably isn't going to go with a Leanne Lee chassis. That's just my observation experience. They're probably going to go something that's a little bit more cost effective. Um, so I don't. You know, I, I guess I would like to see, like, maybe this half the size. Um, and, and is it removable? It looks like it's pop riveted in here. So yeah. that's a big downside. Um, yeah, it looks like it's pop riveted in. Um, I do like the release that they've been using for the last couple of years to uh, keep the drives in place. Um, also, for the five and a quarter drive, this is. This isn't, or is it plastic? No, it's got a plastic core with a metal exterior on it. I like these releases. They look classy, they're nice, they work. So you've got a lot of space if that's what you want. <laughs> it's a lot of It'd be nice to be able space. to take this out though, because yeah. if we're looking at putting a radiator up here. Yeah, right away. I mean, if they're spacing this at 20 millimeters this, the, for the fasteners to fit a radiator, why wouldn't you make it just easily removable right. know, instead of having to pull out a power drill and draw those out? I mean, you know, the question stands, I guess. And I should mention, too, um, regarding the access panel that, again, they've got two covers for locations of adding two 140 millimeter fans. Now, just for the heck of it, I measured the spacing here. And it's not 20 millimeters for a radiator, but then again, I don't know anybody that would put a radiator on their side panel, unless it was Andrew. Right. And just <laughs> just because, I don't, who knows? If you you know if you put a radiator in your side panel, you know it presents a lot. How of would you ever? <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, anyways, um, there you go. There. It's all very nice, good quality, as expected from the Enley. Stamping is very nice. Um, just looking at, uh, Andrew, why don't you take that side panel off and we'll go to that side too. But before we do that, 
Uh, power supply. The base here has got a nice um, vibration dampening material on it, some kind of um, adhesive backed uh, material that's rubberized. Does this have a filter on the bottom? Do you know? I can't I, tell. I don't you know. know actually. Ah, feels like it does. You can feel the filter in it? I can feel it. <laughs> All right, 140 yep. size, and then it looks like you can pop that out yeah. fairly easily. You have five seconds to remove the filter. Maybe. If you do not, it will self-destruct. You cannot destroy the filter while you're removing it. <laughs> I'm too stupid to figure it out. There we go. There you Just go. pops out like that. Nice. I like that. Uh, nice thicker rubber feet on this one than I've seen on other offerings. Um, more mysterious holes. Hmm? Mm. <laughs> Plenty. Yeah, there's we a lot more of these holes. Maybe all they over are. This thing. They could be borrowing a chassis from another tower. I don't know. Um, like this right here, this mounting for something. Um, three and a half inch drive. Why? Why is that like that? Why would? Why is this slotted? Yeah. Why is it only just a pair of holes like that? And this is also uh, Bill and I noticed this is painted. Yeah. Um, and that's the same with several of the other parts. Yeah, the interior, the chassis is painted black. It is aluminum, but the exterior pieces, the front bezel, the top panel, and the side panels are anodized black, which I can't say I've seen before from Lee and Lee. Uh, usually it's been anodized aluminum, so cost saving measure from the manufacturer to get it down to that $199 price point. Um, I will say though, uh, so far I'm liking this a lot more than the B750. I would have to agree. I mean, I have a soft spot for big monster towers. Uh, although, looking at the grommet holes again, it would have been nice to see even more. That's just because I've gotten so used to seeing more in cases now today. Yep. You know? Like um, that one behind me over here. Oh, yeah. That's a perfect example. That's, I think we have uh, 10. That's a NZXT 810 tower. Yeah. That's like cable grommet overkill. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll keep looking around on the back side of the motherboard and we'll kind of like figure out if we can get a radiator in here. So the back side of the motherboard, nice big hole here for uh, accessing, you know, which all the manufacturers are doing now, right. having these holes here. Standard. Um, what's this guy? Um, I guess tucking some type of cables there. It looks like cable management could be a huge pain with this because there's this lip here that takes away from the small amount of space that you have to actually get cables behind this thing. I yeah. can see that being. It a would have been nice if there problem. wasn't a lip there. I mean, obviously that's there to reinforce it, but right. I mean, is it was it really that needed? You know, they felt it was for some reason, but. Um, uh, we look just under an inch of space back there, which is respectable, you know. Um, so you got like this kind of portion here of the support is hollow, so you can guide wires here as they've done already, just for shipping. Um, all internal headers for the USB, which I would expect. Um, and then the wiring is um, like the LEDs, like I said, they actually will They'll, they'll pop out, you can pop them out easily and put them back in, so if you wanted to swap the colors for some reason. They uh, actually include um, some tie bases built in, which is nice for the wiring. I mean, I've seen Liam Lee do that for the last 10 years too. There's a three pin or Mullox connector on each one of the front intake fans. You can't you can't have a drive in the top bay if you have a three if you put a three sixty in this, but that's how many people minor. use more than one optical drive though, right? All right, that's just to show that's a three sixty radiator grill, and I don't have a three sixty on hand radiator grill radiator on hand, but okay. It actually, the 360 radiator will go inside the drive bay there. So, yes, as Andrew says, you can't use the optical drive in the top bay, but if you really wanted a 360 radiator, you've got the space and you can add an extra hole here. But it would have been nice if Lee and Lee still offered that 
as an included option with it. I mean, my school of thought is if the space is there to offer it, why not? Why because not? it just gives you consumers one more reason that it may appeal to them. Right. You know? I'd want a 360 up there. At least, yeah. at least put the, the slot there. And and if it, you don't use it, you don't use it. Isn't like part of our consumer culture here that we like to just know, it's the feeling that you know that you've got that option, even though you may not use it. Right. It's nice to know it's there. You may not put a triple 140 up here, but you <laughs> it's can. It's nice to know. I mean, right. if you're on the Wake site and you're looking for a full tower, it may be the buying factor that you're like, I like that idea and I just maybe, you know, move into that, you know. Andrew's unscrewing the front fans. I'm preparing to remove the pop rivets with this hammer drill. And I'm not quite sure if this will be enough power. What do you think? Um, it might do the job. It may do the might. job? Okay. Um, Considering the dead uh, cordless drill yeah, is, this, you know, This dead. is our only option, so. Um, and you can see that uh, I've used this same drill bit to remove factory rivets before because it's got uh, a few rings on there. This is a one-eighth size drill bit for removing hopper bits. All right. Are those going to come out of there? No. You need <laughs> to take the screws off. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, 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 oh there you go. Feels kind of janky just pulling. <laughs> janky. <laughs> It, they are nice fans to include, though. I they are. That nice. Absolutely. And the mounting system is nice. It's just a little tedious. Mm -hmm. um, right. So okay. we got our fans out there. Um, this is um, this is a separate plate on the front. Whoops. Why don't we screw? Um, let's remove this front plate on here. Huh, so you can see this is the edge of the paint here. Two-tone finish. Two-tone. Ooh. Uh, yeah, um, obviously it was painted in the factory and with that uh, trim piece on it. But um, you can see that the chassis is aluminum. Um, it's not steel. That is interesting. Never seen that before. So I have a 280 Hardware Labs radiator here. And just saying, uh, just confirming that we do have to remove those hard drive cages. Yep, because obviously you're gonna want fans on your radiator. So. <laughs> yes, this is overkill. <laughs> Trip it on hammer mode? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Hammer that. Hammer that. All right, we've got two there. Got a couple on the floor. So if you could kindly turn it on its side. Uh. Milwaukee Power Tools, I highly recommend them. Yeah, right. That tiny little pop rivet. I just don't want to bash up the thing. Ah. It's always fun when the power tools come out. <laughs> Did you see that? Just like butter. Ooh, hammer drill, Bill. Hold it, Andrew. Hold it. You done that thing. If I go any faster, it's just gonna spin. All right. Oh, so there's. We got oh. screws now. Oh, screws! Finally, we've got screws. Don't you love it when they use screws for half of it and then pop rivets for the other? Two screws, not half of it. 12 pop rivets and a couple screws. I just don't oh, get shit. that. I mean, what is the price difference for, I mean, just for the consumer's convenience? I mean, could you just, 
I would pay extra money for something to be. Yeah, that extra five cents. <laughs> right, right. Extra five cents on top of your two hundred dollars. There you go. So that cage, the insanely huge storage cage, is removed. Um, so then we can we'll just mount this guy up with some fans on it with their um, their uh, adapter plate. Okay, what we're doing in order to install the radiator in the front, and this is a 280 size Harbor Labs dual 140 radiator. What you're gonna need is a M4 socket head screw, M4 by six millimeters long, okay? And then this screw mounts the fan on through the bottom portion of this fan frame here. Because we're gonna use the factory fan mounting screws that came with Lee and Lee to mount the radiator in front of the chassis. Okay, so once you have the fans fastened on the radiator with the M4 six millimeter screws, We'll use the Lian Lee screws and grommets from their factory fans. Put these on here. And the reason why I'm not using the Lian Lee fans is because the, um, they have this closed side here that you won't allow you to use two different fasteners. So that's why I'm using these Prolimitec fans instead to just illustrate how the radiator would mount in the chassis. So we're just uh, mounting this radiator here using the Lee Lee factory screws and these fans. Whoops, just gonna make sure the grommets are through the holes all the way around. And just slide it over like that and there you go. So that's a nice bonus with this. And obviously you can mount a uh, triple 140 radiator in there too. One thing is, is that the barbs will have to be up on top on the radiator. If you take a look back here, these you can't have it upside down with these on the bottom. There's not gonna be enough space for it. So the barbs on the radiator will have to be on the top. We didn't have to do anything other than drill out pop rivets that held in the hard drive cage. These two remaining brackets here are screwed in. So that's easy enough to remove. It would have been nice if the whole cage, if this entire cage was screwed in at these points here. I mean, what was a total of uh, six, I think six screws we had to drill out. It's not terrible, but why not make them screws instead? You know, just make it easier for a lot more people and you don't have to deal with um, little pieces of aluminum, having to clean that up. So, well, that's nice. I guess one option is, is you could chop this and mount it up here so you could at least put three drives up here. If you have uh, uh, if, double. Yeah, if you're doing a dual 140. Um, but if you, know, if you do the triple, that eliminates that idea. We don't see um, designated mounting holes for SSDs or three and a half inch drives on the floor, so that eliminates that. Um, However, there's a lot of space. There. There's a lot of space so there, so I mean, you could drill make holes. it work. Yeah, but once you, if you were the engineer of this, wouldn't you consider that? Absolutely. <laughs> I would, I mean, right. But they obviously didn't consider that because that was riveted in. So they're not thinking people are taking that hard drive cage out. But somewhere in the, pro th in the thought process of, I would like to assume in the thought process of the engineer who designed this, he made this so it would fit this radiator, right? Uh, presumably. 140 size radiators, right. okay. Why wouldn't you take it to the next level and think, okay, if they go through doing this, they're gonna wanna put their storage drives Like what somewhere. Fractal, yeah. Fractal's thought process. Yeah. So you could move the drive bay or Yeah, move something the drive like bay that. or mount them on the back side of the motherboard. Right. And it's just a matter of adding the specific size holes to fit a three and a half inch or uh, two and a half inch SSD. And there's also some mystery uh, slots here. We can't quite figure out what, and they're on the other side of the power supply mount here too. Can't figure out what you could possibly be mounting to the bottom or inside of the case there. Yeah, because it's not a 140 size fan mounting configuration or a 180. It's too rectangular. Um, so it's just kind of odd. But they could could have put these in. Yeah, several a another roll here for even just, yeah, for a three and a half inch drive. Um, 
it would have been ideal if they had like two side by side here for either or. I don't know. It's just mm, things things that make you go hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh. I love this. Yeah, that's great. I mean, so they've included a case here, sort of like a, a tackle box uh, style for all of the accessories, and I think that's great. If I had this with every case that we got, we wouldn't have piles of screws everywhere and not know where things went. So this is a really cool addition, I think. I know what these are for, is at the um, two 120 locations on the top panel. So if you did use fans in there, you could put these screens in there. Um, you know, it's just so you're protecting your fan and nothing falls into them. So that was nice. Looks like more fan mounting grommets. Um, this is uh, this is something that screws on the back of two of those holes. This right here is um, so you can put a little tiny padlock on your side panel. I believe that goes here. So once you put the side panel on, you can lock it on if you want, so no one else has access to your stuff in there. Um, we've seen these before. These were for um, mounting the GPUs, right? Yeah, sort of a pain, but yeah, they're included. So on the um, V750 Lee and Lee that Andrew reviewed, he did a demonstration of how these are uh, installed and mounted on graphics cards. These would be for um, mounting all the drives, three and a half inch drives. These screws go on the side and then into the slots on the cage right here which also you demoed in that video as well right and i'll put a link to that video in the bottom of the screen annotations link um uh, motherboard screws a lot more grommets in here fan screws uh motherboard speaker uh cable ties um, motherboard standoff wrench. Um, these screws are for uh, SSDs, I believe. Are those? Mm -hmm. I think so. And I see so many different screws all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to mix these up. And this is sort of a. Those are for a uh, wide variety of thumb yeah, screws power supply, and side panels. Of the, yeah, motherboard standoffs. Standoff. But there's nothing in here that would explain why those um, four holes there are there for the power supply. Maybe if somebody knows that's watching the review, they can just post up on the video comments. Accessories look good though. Yeah, yeah, plenty of accessories. You white like eyes way too much. Yes, I do love it too much. All right, well, since you looked at the V750 and you compared it that to this, what are your thoughts? I love this case. I think uh, almost half the price of the V750. It feels a little bit more refined. I like the feel of everything in this case a lot better, I think. Um, one thing I would say is that hard drive cage is my ma main problem with it, but I don't think it's enough to keep anyone from buying the case. No. It just takes a little more effort to get the job done if you want a big radiator. Just pull out a power drill and drill out the pop of it. It's not that big a deal. Right. You know, um, it would have been nice if it was all screws, but hey, you know. Um, also consider Lee and Lee, if you're listening and watching, making this a 360 option too. It, you've got the space there, why not? Um, I think for 199 if I was in the market for something big monster tower like this, I would go for it. I like Lee and Lee's products. Um, you're more in the uh, triple or quad GPU realm, so this is a perfect, you know, chassis for your market. Huge, spacious. Yeah. Fits everything we need. Yeah, and the fact that you can get a uh, dual 140 or a triple 140 radiator in this thing without like having to get the vertical saw or jigsaw and Dremel, that's, that's a nice bonus too, so. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. It looks. So, thanks again for watching. I hope, hope that uh, We've answered any kind of questions you've had about the A75, and uh, we always appreciate your comments. And uh, if you don't already, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll have more videos to come.